Greetings, family and friends of NLC. Let us come together virtually to worship God in the spirit and in truth. For this is what God seeks. Let us praise God and declare that He is the King of Kings. Crowned Him with many crowns, the Lamb upon His throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns. Victorious in the strife For those he came to save His glories now we sing Who died and rose on high Who died eternal life to bring And lives that death may die Let all praise him, let all praise him For he is God Joyful we hail, joyful we hail, He is the King of Kings. Let all praise Him, let all praise Him, for He is Lord of all. Joyful we hail, joyful we hail, He is the King of Kings. hands and side those wounds yet visible above in beauty glorify no angel in the sky can fully bear that sight but downward bends his burning eye at mystery so bright let all praise him Dear God, thank you for being our King. Thank you for redeeming us through your sacrificial love. We also thank you for revealing all these things to us through your words. For the law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold.
the decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. Lord, you are more precious than silver. Indeed, nothing we desire compares with you, Lord. So we respond to you by offering our times to you, our lives, our friends, our souls. We live entirely to your care. My times are in your hand. My God, I wish them there. Times are in your hand, whatever they may be, be it pleasing or painful, dark or bright, as best we seem to you. My times are in your hand, Lord Jesus, the Brothers and sisters, let us pray together. Dear God Almighty, as a church united in Christ, we praise you for you are good. We praise you for your love endures forever. We pray in the name of Jesus because we believe in, there is glorious power in his name. We pray for one another and we pray that you will help us in our weaknesses. But we don't feel like praying or don't know what to pray, too busy to pray, may you grant us words. Teach us to pray 
according to your divine will. And when we are restless, utter many meaningless words, may you grant us restedness. Help us to be still and know you are God. So that when we are in the posture of prayer, we will all behold your glory and your great works. And just like right now, as we pray together in our homes, may we once again ponder on what God you have done for us sinners. When we ponder on the gospel of Jesus Christ, may we cherish the gospel, embrace it and share to the people around us. And I pray that Newton Life Church will become a gospel-centric church, a church where all believers will love to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so I pray that may everything that we do today in our worship service online be an expression of what we truly believe in. May the songs we sang reveal what is in our heart. May the prayer we pray demonstrate our dependence on Jesus Christ. May the sermon we preach make the gospel clearer to all who are watching this online worship. And may the offerings we give be our expressions of our love for the body of Christ. Thank you, God. May our spiritual act of worship be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7 to 14. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to the body of Christ and the Church of God. One feels breathless reading these words of the psalmist. There are so many good things attributed to the law of God, the Word of God. In this text that we read, the Word of God is described as pure and perfect, more value than gold, sweeter than honey. And the benefits of God's word listed here are many. It revives the soul for those who are depressed. It makes wise for those who lack wisdom and are naive. It rejoices the heart 
uplifting one's spirit. It enlightens the eyes, giving mental clarity. It also serves as a warning to, uh, to avoid unnecessary losses in life. That's a great reward. It even acquits one from sin and it acts as a restraint from sinful behavior. No wonder the Bible is the world's best-selling book by far since its mass availability with the invention of the printing press. So we must all be very busy reading the Bible and loving every minute of it, right? I'm afraid not, if we are honest with ourselves and before God. Yes, it is the best-selling book. It is also the least-read best-selling book. The United States is described as the most Christian nation on earth. Yet in terms of Bible literacy among God's people, it is very low, survey after survey. I found one survey made 30 years ago, the Barner Research Group. They found that 90% of American households have at least one copy of the Bible. Yet only 15%, one five, said they read it every day. 37% said they only read it once a week. So why? Why is the Bible so unread and unloved? Now, this morning, I do not want to address this issue by answering this question. Instead, I would like to take a positive approach as we consider this scripture text in Psalm 19. I'd like to encourage us to have this important perspective that will energize us to start reading and learning the Word of God in the Bible and reaping its benefits as promised in this psalm, the passage under consideration this morning. I'm going to make three points. Firstly, I'd like to say this. Reading is listening. The act of reading the Word of God is an act of active listening to God. You see, if we approach the Bible as just any other book to read for leisure, there is not much motivation because there's a lot of competition. There are plenty of more immediate interests out there to occupy our attention. There are many outlets for leisure in our society. Shopping, movies, YouTube, Facebook, serving the internet, meeting with friends. However, if we truly desire to hear God's voice and have Him speak to us, then we better give Him our time and attention. How often we have felt that God doesn't answer our prayers or at least answer the way we would like Him to. Or God seemed to speak to others more than He would speak to me or maybe not to me at all. Well, I'd like to suggest the problem is not that God doesn't speak often but we haven't been listening often. We think that listening to God's voice is just like waiting to hear a voice coming into our consciousness or in a dream or through praying to Him for a positive answer. Actually, 
90% of things that we want to know from God or we want to hear from Him is already made clear in the Bible. And when we read the Word of God regularly and pay attention to it, we would have already heard from Him most of the time. So, we don't read, we won't hear from Him. It's as simple as that. It is a pity that in Singapore, where literacy is nearly 100%, many of us are functional illiterates when it comes to the Word of God. We can read, but we won't read. So this is God's challenge for all of us this morning. Reading is listening. Read well, and we will listen well. Point number two. Listening is hard work. It's rewarding hard work. Yes, listening to God, in fact, listening to anyone is hard work. But it is rewarding. If we do not believe that it is an effort that rewards, we won't do it. Now, I'm not the one here to guarantee you that it is rewarding. The Word of God said so in this psalm. God said so. He is the one who promised that your hard work, my hard work of reading, will pay off handsomely. Look at some of the words in this scripture text. Reviving, making wise, rejoicing the heart, enlightening the eyes, enduring forever, more valuable than fine gold, sweeter than honey. In fact, verse 11 is pretty straightforward there is great reward. In fact, in verses 12 and 13, the reward is forgiveness and acquittal. God declaring us righteous. I remember in my sermon last month, I mentioned that prayer is hard work. And reading to listen is even harder work. So I'm not going to make it easy for us. In fact, reading and understanding what God has said in the Bible is a prerequisite for praying right and worshipping well. If we have not read the Bible, we will not know who God is and what He is like. Then we will pray and worship a God of our own imagination. I think He's like that, like this, but actually He is not. No wonder this imaginary God of ours doesn't seem to answer our prayers. The Christian writer Philip Yancey once confronted a sister in Christ in his church who was planning to leave her husband and abandoned her marriage for another man. She very bravely replied, My God is not so judgmental. In other words, God has already approved her action. Philip Yancey told this story in the context of a book that he wrote. The title is, The Jesus I Never Knew. You see, idolatry or the worship of an idol is not just worshipping a false image of wood or stone. It is even more deadly and damaging to worship a Jesus that we never truly know. He may only be a Jesus of our imagination, 
because it is convenient for us to think of Him in our image for our convenience and benefit. Six years ago, when the CEO of Apple Computer came out to say that being gay is God's greatest gift to me, he's definitely referring to a different God and not our God of the Bible because God did not say any of that in the Bible. But if we don't read, we won't know. We might be fooled. So listening to God through reading His Word is hard work, but rewarding work. At the same time, it will also save us a lot of pain and heartache when our lives veer off course because of a bad decision based on a false understanding of what God really said and did not say in His Word. Reading the Bible and listening to God will also shape our behavior and our attitudes. If we listen badly, we will behave badly. And that is why repentance is not just about crying and being sorry. It is also about the act of going back to the Word of God to find out where we have taken the wrong turn. Thirdly and finally, my last point. God blesses us through our listening. We may say that listening is the channel in which God's blessings come into our lives and His blessings flow into our lives. When we do not read the Word of God to listen to His voice, then that channel is blocked. I have thought for a couple of days to find a clearer expression of what it means to be blessed. You see, many of us have been Christian for many years. The words being blessed, blessing, to be blessed, seem so familiar to us until we are challenged to explain it in other words and in clearer terms and in everyday language that even the people on the street can understand. I thought of the phrase, in good shape. It may not be a perfect replacement, but let me try. You see, in our daily discourse, we often heard something like this. Oh, so-and-so's business and career is in good shape. Or we say, oh, this sister is now in good shape after her operation. Or we may say, oh, with the counselling, this couple's marriage is now in good shape. I like to suggest that to be blessed by God is to have every area of our lives in good shape. In verse 11 in this text, it reads this way, Moreover by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Now the Hebrew word for reward here is more often translated as some kind of a consequence. A reward or a blessing or ending up in good shape is a consequence. It is an end result of a chain of actions taken or not taken. So in closing, I'd like to challenge all of us, young and old, brother or sister, take action now. Start reading the Word of God, which means 
we are starting to listen to the voice of God and listening well. Which means we are preparing to put in the hard work. Which means we will also pray and worship well. Which means that the channel to God is open for His blessings to flow. Which means our life are going to be in good shape or getting into good shape. So my question is this. How is our shape lately? And how have we been shaping up? Let's not wait. Let's start to listen and be blessed. Let us pray. Now with every eyes closed and every head bowed in the presence of God, let us search our hearts to ask, how have I been listening to God? And what must I start doing? Or start afresh? Or continue to do in order to get and to stay in good shape. Speak, Lord, for we, your servants, are repentant and humbly willing to listen once again. Come, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Shake us once again so that we will get into shape in order that we may once again be inspired and energized by listening to your voice. Amen. For this morning's prayer time, let us bring before the Lord these three items. Number one, pray for our online small group fellowship this month. May God grant each small group leader the confidence to facilitate this gathering. Pray that we will build each other's faith in Christ and bless one another by serving, caring and praying. Number two, we give thanks to God for nourishing our soul with His Word. May our faith, life and mission be pleasing to Him. Let us learn not to be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds, that we may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable and perfect. Number three, let us give thanks for Singapore's orderly general election last Friday. May God establish the elected leaders to govern our nation with justice, honesty and integrity. May the Lord empower them to lead through these difficult times for the benefit of all Singaporeans. Let us conclude this morning's worship with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Hi, my brothers and sisters. I have some announcements here. Firstly, D6 Family Conference 2020. The Bible Society of Singapore will be holding a two-day webinar on the 24th and 25th of July with the team Day 1, Communicating and Connecting During Crisis as Husband and Wife. 
And day two, raising Generation Z, how to build their faith in a complex world. We strongly recommend you to sign up for this webinar. In such testing times, the more we need God's guidance in these areas of our lives. So for more information, please visit Bible Society website. Worship Service at Home My dear brothers and sisters, on every Sunday, 10.30am, this is a time we set for us to worship the Lord. I encourage you to set apart this day at this time and worship God with us sincerely. May we listen to the God of love so that we can be fed spiritually and grow to be more like Jesus. Offerings I encourage you to continue to practice the spiritual discipline of offerings. So please refer to the bulletin or our church website for more information. Thank you. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace forever and ever. Amen.